Hello everyone and welcome back. My name is Ivan of Plotit Studios and today we are going over the next product in the video series, the Fredenstein F600A compressor. Now unlike VCA, FET, Opto, Verimu, or other style circuits, the F600A uses a pair of digitally controlled attenuator and amplifiers for gain reduction as well as makeup gain, giving this compressor a very unique sound. And part of the sound, you could describe it as clean and smooth. Another benefit of DSP utilization is the fact that you could run up to 10 units using one of the Bento 10D racks for multi-channel compression that is extremely accurate down to the floating point. Like I said, if you have a Bento 60 or a 10D, you can make recall as easy as a virtual plugin. Having a compressor that uses DSP and digital controlled, you would assume that it is kind of like a plasticky sound. But guess what? It uses all, all analog circuit and it's just digitally controlled. And it also has a max output, like I said, of 26 dB without affecting the sonic quality of it. Now from the top of this unit, we'll see the VU meter. This VU meter will go from negative 20 to plus five, similarly with all Fredenstein gold products. On the right hand side of it, you'll see an on switch. This is a blue illuminated switch that is a hard bypass when it's turned off with, with no illumination. However, when it's active, you'll also see the VU needle pointing at zero, indicating that it's currently active. And as I mentioned, when it's bypassed, the VU meter will go down to negative 20, so that way you know it is inactive. Passing the bypass switch, we are going into the first set of knobs, and that's going to be our gain control and our threshold control. The gain control is actually makeup gain, and it'll allow you a range of zero to plus 15.5 dB to compensate for gain reduction. Now this is also very, very smooth dialing, so you could get the exact precision you need. A plus seven to negative 20 dB for our threshold. In our next set of controls, we have the attack and release control. Our attack, similar to other compressors, determines how fast the compressor reacts to the signal above the threshold. For our release control, if the signal drop below the threshold, the release time determines how fast the compressor falls back to the zero dB gain reduction. As you could see, our input or our attack time is going to be from one millisecond per dB to 31 milliseconds dB. Our release time, however, will be two milliseconds dB to 129 milliseconds per decibel. Directly to the right of the attack and release control, we actually have our peak RMS switch. In the first setting, which is the LED not illuminated, the peak signal is fed to the sidechain and soft knee is selected. When you single tap it, the LED will have a short flash indicating the peak plus a hard knee mode selected. When you press it the second time in the third setting, the LED will turn on solid and the RMS plus soft knee is selected versus the peak in the off setting. Now finally, once you select it for the fourth time, the LED emits a short off period and the RMS plus hard knee mode is selected. These are the current four modes of the peak RMS switch, allowing you to get every single option possible. Directly under the peak RMS switch, we actually have our link switch, which is very important. In the current environment, it is run as mono. However, when you select that switch, it will now turn it into a stereo multi-channel application, as I mentioned, synchronizing up to 10 units. Dictating the master-slave relationship, the F600A with the highest gain reduction will take the lead and the other will follow. In our final set of knobs, we have our compression ratio and our high pass filter. For the compression ratio, the amount of increase in output level is relative to the input signal. So fully counterclockwise, our minimum is 1.5 to 1 compression, where our maximum is 101 compression, which is limiting. Our high pass filter, on the other hand, fully counterclockwise, it is a full flat frequency response. However, if you go fully clockwise, we have a maximum high pass filter of 4K or 4000 Hertz. Let's go into the audio sample portion of the video. Today we're actually going to be using Cambridge audio samples. In particular, these were provided by Telefunken. So the song is called What I Want from the band The Brew. It's a rock track and we're going to go ahead and just apply 
the F600A compression to all of the samples available, primarily kick, snare, possibly the drums overheads and just a, a two bus of that, bass, guitar, and vocals. That way we have a globalized view of what this F600A can do. And on top of that, since these are publicly available, I will link the audio samples in the description below so that way you could hear the before and after.
I stand outside in the rain I take the physical pain At the end of the day The girls would I want I stand outside in the rain I take the physical pain at the end of the day, the girls would I want. Cause the girls would I want. Cause the girls would I want. Cause the girls would I want Cause the girls would I want As you can see, the F600A is a pretty versatile compressor. We used it on kicks, snare, overheads, toms, bass, guitars, vocals, and even gang vocals for the chorus. There's a lot it can do, and I have yet to find something it can't do. So that's really great to me. Also, once again, with the Fredenstein Gold series for the preamps, you notice that they he does use a lot for analog circuitry and quite honestly that is something i love and i favor as, as i mentioned time and time again so being able to have a unit that is a very quick compressor has multiple features that most newer compressors don't have but still stay true to a pure analog circuit is something that i personally love and just on a quick tangent, that's something I've loved about Fredenstein as well because they are continuously innovating and they're not really following 
the current trend of audio companies that are just making clones of devices. So truly hats off for being able to create such unique devices that yes, they do pay homage to the older units, but however, they are new in itself and create this new product. But like I mentioned, um, having that peak RMS with soft knee, hard knee is great. Having a high pass filter that goes up to 4K, that is unheard of to me in most of high pass filters for compressors. And the only time you'd really see that is if you're using a plugin. Then also in another direction, the extremely fast attack and release times, but also being able to pull it back substantially just in case you need to have a slower release. And on some of the stuff I've worked on, having that option also really works to my favor because I've dealt with a lot of audio where it's very slow moving and you don't have to have a very quick and snappy compressor. You could have it slower release and just kind of decay and flow with the music really. Then on top of that, you have the gain feature and also the uh, threshold. So it has so many different aspects of it. And like I said, if you have a Bento 10D or 10DS or 6D, you could also just link them up if you're using something over a 2.0 system. So in other words, if you have a stereo profile, which is left and right, you could link them together in stereo. But if you're doing 5.1 sound, 7.1 sound, 7.2, the 10D can also support that because you could daisy chain them and it's already integrated in itself. There's parameters in the 10D that allow you to do the daisy chaining automatically. Whereas something like my Bento 8 Pro, you would just link it on the back end where you have the bus compressor and then you would hit link in the front of the actual module. But that's another topic for another day. Thank you once again for watching. And in the next video series, we will just include another one. We still have the entire artistic series left. And we also have a very awesome tube compressor that I'm just looking forward to showing you exactly how awesome that one is. So once again, I'm Ivan of Plotted Studios. Thank you for watching.